Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, on today's episode, I've got a bit of a piece of a weird uh, new story, I guess, to share with you because, well, uh, the future of magic uh, apparently is more wide open than I ever thought it was. We might be seeing some characters that you're very familiar with that I didn't realize that wizards might use and could use, even without any kind of a partnership. So, Let's jump into this, and uh, yeah, let's jump over to Blogatog really quick. In the Tumblr post uh, from Bobby McBobbo, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing that, asked, the recent ask about Alice in Wonderland got me thinking, so far, all of your universes beyond releases have been in partnerships with other companies, often time to come out the same time as products or events from the other company. Would it be possible to see universes beyond products from public domain works? Or are you more likely to take those public domain works and use them to build new planes like you did with Eldraine and Theros? And Mark Rosewater, the head designer at Wizards, responded, Public domain uh, IPs, intellectual pro properties, aren't off limits. Okay, so um, that is something that is quite interesting. I mean, I kind of like, I mean, I think many people just inherently know that there are certain things that are of the public domain that basically anyone can use. I mean, certain like kind of old stories and whatnot, old characters. That list might be quite larger than you might think. And also there are certain rules uh, when it comes to, at least the United States, public domain and how it works and how long characters stay out of the public domain, essentially. And, uh, yeah, it's actually getting quite interesting because Wizards is now saying, yeah, uh, apparently, and I guess I should say Wizards in general, but Mark Rosewater, the head designer who has a lot of pull at Wizards, obviously, especially when it comes to design, uh, yeah, public domain uh, intellectual properties are not off limits, which I guess makes sense. If we think back to when, you know, those Dracula cards were coming, you know, in Innistrad or other, like those Dracula kind of variations or whatever they were called, essentially, yeah, that, that actually isn't a separate IP. I, I don't believe, uh, correct me below the comments, I'm wrong on that one, but I don't believe that's a separate IP at, at all that we kind of partnered with. That is just public domain kind of, you know, characters essentially that, you know, anyone can use, you know, even for profit like Wizards did. So I believe that's how that one worked. But let me know in the comments below if that's incorrect on that one. But yeah, apparently, I mean, there was an ask about Alice in Wonderland, which actually could be a pretty cool, you know, secret layer kind of, you know, like Alice in Wonderland style cards, you know. Uh, you know, for, I don't even know what you have, like Cascade, I think would, would work with that, maybe? I don't know what kind of, you know, cards would work really well with Alice in Wonderland. I think that that is kind of like falling down in the hole. It kind of just, you know, makes me think about Cascade. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, apparently uh, certain public domains might be used in the future by Wizards, you know, for Universes Beyond and for potentially even other products as well. So I thought it'd be pretty interesting to kind of take a look at, you know, what public domains are out there and, uh, yeah, what characters are actually in the public domain all already that wizards could use so now let's jump over to this website where they list out the best public domain characters apparently so uh yeah uh, I, I this is not my list i will say but you know there are some pretty good ones in there but yeah we've got number one apparently robin hood i did not realize robin hood, i guess i should have that robin hood is public domain there's a lot of different you know properties that have used it i mean didn't mel brooks make a robin hood movie i mean there's disney movies as well uh, yeah, uh, apparently Robin Hood is public domain, so if Wizards literally tomorrow wanted to do, you know, a Robin Hood secret lair, R Wizards could do that. Uh, next up, Zorro. I really didn't realize Zorro was public domain. That'd be a pretty cool one as well. See, I did not realize that. Moving on, Dracula, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, uh, Dracula apparently is public domain. Wizards does not need to partner with anyone to be like, hey, here's some Dracula cards. There you go. Sherlock Holmes. That's kind of cool. That Sherlock Holmes is public domain. And we have had, like, you know, like a Sherlock Holmes type character. I can't remember what the character's name is the one hawken uh jacob hawken there we go but still like an actual just sherlock holmes you know uh with watson you know secret lair that could be quite fun uh john carter for all you john carter fans out there there you go frankenstein's monster that would be one as well scarecrow i'm assuming that's the scarecrow from the wizard of oz uh we'll, we'll talk about it here in a second probably if we get to that dorothy gale there you go tin woodman so yeah uh, apparently the uh wizard of oz characters as well cowardly lion there you go hunchback of Notre Dame. there we go as well king kong actually i didn't realize king kong was uh, apparently so yeah wizards i mean it's outside of kogla you know <laughs> which is already basically magic's king kong we could just do a full king kong secret if we really wanted to ivanhoe don't know what that is uh alice there you go alice in wonderland Jack Pumpkinhead, whatever that is, 
Gravestone. Not sure who that is either. Doodle. We're getting some weird ones, apparently. Man of War. I'm just going to get to about 30, I think. Uh, there's a couple in here. Here you go. Jekyll and Hyde. There you go. I think that's really cool right there. Jekyll and Hyde Seeker there could be very cool. Get up like some split cards or some MDFCs or whatnot. They could work very well with that. Cthulhu. That could be a huge one. Now, we already kind of have like Cthulhu elements, obviously, you know, with like shadows over Innistrad and like the Eldrazi and that kind of stuff. There are some Cthulhu elements to that. And we've got like some sea monsters as well. That being said, like a full Cthulhu secret layer could be pretty sweet. And there could be some gnarly art for that, I am sure. Uh, Hercules, apparently. Now, oh, there you go. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's from, you know, uh, yeah, a long time ago in mythology. So <laughs> I was going to say Greek or Roman. I can't remember. I think it's Greek. I don't think it's Roman. I could be wrong. Regardless. Yeah, a, a long time ago. Uh, Natty Bumpo. No idea who that is. White Rabbit. Uh, so yeah, Alice in Wonderland. Paul Bunyan. Hey, for Minnesotans out there. There you go. Paul Bunyan's coming at you to the secret lair with Babe the Blue Ox. There you go. Order it right now uh, with foil and non-foil options. There, there you go. And that's exactly how they would advertise it. Uh, Long John Silver, apparently. The Wizard of Oz. That could be a very interesting one indeed. I mean, obviously, I already talked about, you know, Alice. But yeah, they could have these different kind of cards like that. Wizard of Oz could be a very cool card. I wonder what that would be. Uh, fire hair not sure what that is captain nemo uh there you go a uh, thousand leagues under the sea or uh, ten thousand leagues under the sea a lot of leagues under the sea uh king arthur and woggle bug uh not sure what that is mystico i i guess i said i would stop at 30 but i'm just a little okay queen of hearts i i'm just a little uh you know uh, um you know i i just i don't know what to expect i guess from one small week i mean what's not i i'm kind of just you know surprised to keep seeing more and more ones and okay alan quartermain cool wow helen of troy mouthpiece moby dick there you go giant whale okay i'm done just scrolling through these uh, but what i did want to mention though is kind of how well um certain things that you might not think be public are public domain become public domain at a certain point, uh, at least in the United States with uh, the law and the way it is. And something actually happened and I kind of heard about this and I forgot that that's literally what happened, but uh, Winnie the Pooh uh, just became public domain, I believe uh, this year, earlier this year, uh, which makes it pretty weird because yeah, uh, right when that happened, apparently uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh, I'll just read the article real quick, at least part of the article, here we go. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, blood and honey, yeah, that's right. They made a horror movie off of Winnie the Pooh. The low-budget horror film that uh, film that opened in America on Friday has grossed more than 2.5 million globally, according to Box Office Mojo. Admittedly, 2.5 million be a disastrous figure for most films, but the haul makes Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey a financial hit because it cost only 100,000 to make, which means that it's grossed 25 times production budget, a mass return for its backers. Most Hollywood blockbusters only make between two to four times their production budgets. So yeah, Winnie the Pooh uh, was not public domain. It was private and then became public. And then immediately someone's like, yeah, let's make a horror film with Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, the filmmaker struck gold by taking the beloved cuddly character created by author A. a. Milne and illustrator E. H. Shepard and made iconic Disney uh, and turning him into a monstrous grizzly murderer. <laughs> Why on earth did Disney, which held the exclusive rights to Winnie the Pooh since 1960s, allowed their Pooh Bear to be portrayed this way? Well, the studio had no choice. That's because the 1926 storybook, which was titled Winnie the Pooh, which introduced the particular character, passed in the public domain at the start of 2022, voiding its copyright and thus Disney's media exclusivity over the character. So basically, Disney did own it at one point when they purchased it or whatnot, and then it didn't matter. At a certain point, hey, you hit the number of years, and we'll talk about really quick the number of years, and what other characters might be coming into the public domain, which Wizards will have access to as well, you know, on top of all the other, apparently, uh, horror movie franchises that are going to be started off of these. How long does copyright last and thus keeps an IP out of public domain? Differs by country, but in the United States, it's 95 years for most IP created before 1978. See more on this below. And Pooh had to run on the clock, meaning that now anyone can make content featuring that lovable or otherwise bear. In the next dozen years or so, uh, a slew of other iconic characters will be falling when they put into public domain. Wrestling control from the likes of Disney and Warner Brothers, who have made billions from them. So... Yeah, other characters are going to be apparently following suit. Uh, here we go. Toon superheroes and spies. This year, the iconic detective Sherlock Holmes and teen detective duo the Hardy Boys enter the public domain. So there you go. Sherlock Holmes was not public, just became public. Over the next dozen years or so, many other well-known characters will see their copyright expire, including Mickey Mouse. 
That is going to be crazy, and I cannot believe that Disney's not. They probably already already are trying to throw every single lawyer they have at that to stop that from happening. But 2024 Mickey, oh my goodness. So yeah, you could see a Mickey Mouse magic card in 2024 apparently, and Wizards would not have to pay Disney a dime or ask them about it at all, which would be kind of ironic since... Disney Lorcana is coming out, I think, this year at some point. Their trading card game. So this could get pretty hairy. Uh, Pluto, 2025. Donald Duck, 2029. Superman, 2033. So in 10 years, apparently, Superman is going to pass into the public domain, which would be very weird, very interesting. Uh, the characters from The Hobbit uh, are going to be 2033. So that's actually kind of interesting because Wizards already paid to, you know, partner with Lord of the Rings. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the, now apparently the, uh, the Hobbit ones are going to go in 2023 or 2033. Uh, James Bond in 2034. That is insane. We could see a James Bond secret layer apparently in 11 years. I guess it, I guess I should say, um, if secret layers are still a thing, and I guess if magic is still around, uh, there you go. <laughs> that would be it. Uh, Batman 2034. That's massive. That is huge. Uh, Captain Marvel, which is actually DC Shazam. That's a weird story if you've ever heard the backstory of all that. Uh, 2034. The Flash uh, 2035. Captain America 2036. Aquaman 2036. And Wonder Woman 2036, weird that these are potentially going into the public domain in those years. And uh, apparently those companies are not able to stop them. I mean, again, the big one would be just like Mickey. If, if Disney can't stop Mickey, that would be pretty crazy. So yeah, we shall see though uh, what happens over the next couple of years. If Wizards starts to take advantage of any of these, you know, public domain characters, uh, you know, if, you know, Wizards is going to start taking advantage of the ones that just are becoming public domain. I mean, we could see Winnie the Pooh secret layer right now, apparently. So yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on all this. Let me know which public domain characters you'd like to see most, you know, in a secret layer or any magic product or whatnot. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.